angry protesters at Justin Trudeau rallies, many from the People's Party of Canada, or the PPC. And conservatives were clearly worried the PPC was stealing their votes. Justin Trudeau wants you to split the vote by voting PPC. He wants you to let him get away with it. The conservatives did bleed some support to the PPC, but not as much as you might think. It's not necessarily fair to say that all of the votes uh, that were uh, gathered by the PPC would have been conservative votes. Indeed, internal conservative polls said as many as 25% of PPC voters this year cast a ballot in 2019 for the Green Party. And like many Green voters, the PPC vote was seen as a protest vote. There's a significant number of people who are voting for the, uh, the, uh, the People's Party this time around, just as there is for the Greens, who are really none of the above voters. So it's really a, an odd coalition of different types of voters, not all of whom would have ended up voting Conservative. The PPC platform this year was the same as 2019, anti-immigrant, anti-foreign aid, anti-CBC, and so on. But the galvanizing force this year was opposition to public health restrictions, and their target was not just Justin Trudeau, but anyone in power. We have seen anti-vaccine, anti-mask, anti-COVID restrictions for a year and a half across this province against all elected leaders, against Doug Ford, against Jason Kenney, against Brian Pallister. There's a bit of an anti-system, anti-institutional vote going on there that wouldn't have necessarily come out for the Conservatives, particularly, uh, particularly this time around. The big question for the country's political class, if there was no pandemic, would 800,000 Canadians have voted for the PPC? Pollsters and political scientists say probably not. But so long as there are public health restrictions, expect those who object to those restrictions to find their political voice in movements like the PPC. Donna? Okay, David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you.